taking some radical expressions and we're going to write them in exponential form. Now, the way that I remember exponential form is it's power over root. Power over root. Um, or I'd never really heard that before, what Carter just said. He said index, so POI, point of interest, uh, related to that. Um, I also look at it if you need help remembering which one comes first. P comes before R in the alphabet, so it's power over root. So if we are writing the cube root of 6x raised to the fourth power, if we're writing that in exponential form, then we take that expression, the 6x, it has a power of 4, and it is the cube root. So that is 6x raised to the 4 over 3. So when you see the 4 over 3rd power, that means take the cube root of that expression raised to the 4th power. That's what that means. Okay? Now, notice B is slightly different. That squared is not on that entire expression. That squared is on the M. So... You've got to look at this entire expression as being raised to the first power. This is 4m squared to the 1 over 3, or to the 1 third power. That means the cube root of 4m squared. Okay, so notice, be careful of where the exponents are, whether they're outside the entire expression or if they're on a single term. Now, let's look at some with fractions in them, or that are fractional to begin with. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get those out of the denominator. Now, using properties of exponents, we can do that by changing the sign of the exponent. So that is equivalent to the cube root of 5x to the negative fifth. And then write it in exponential form. So the entire expression was to the negative fifth power. So it goes, that's the power of our exponent. Now, this last one, 8 over the cube root of 8x squared. So we've got a couple more different things going on. Okay, first of all, that squared is only on the x, so I think it's helpful to kind of put parentheses around that and put a first power so that it's clear that's not 8x to the 2 thirds, okay? It is not 8x to the 2 thirds. It's 8x squared to the 1 third, all right? So uh, if we move that up, it joins the 8, with a negative one. And so the 8 stays out front. We've got 8x squared to the negative 1 third. Now, that is all we can do. Well, it's not all that we can do that, but um, you cannot multiply those 8s, okay, because this 8 has an exponent. Exponents come before multiplication. Um, we, we could simplify right here in this step the cube root of 8. We're going to get to simplifying here in a minute, so I'm just going to leave this one. Um, I'm not going to simplify this expression. We're going to do that in a minute. Um, but I just wanted to point that out that we could simplify the cube root of 8 in here. No, we can only simplify the cube root of 8 part. So it would be 2. But the x squared would still be under our cube root. Okay? Alright. So, okay, 6n to the 4 thirds. 6n is in parentheses. So this is the cube root of 6n to the 4th. You could write it like that. Or you can write it like this. You can write it as the cube root of 6n in parentheses with the 4th under the radical. Those mean the same thing, okay? It doesn't matter um, whether you apply the root first 
or the exponent first? It doesn't matter. You should get the same answer. So those are equivalent forms there. Okay. Now, B, a little different. B's missing uh, parentheses. So that means that the exponent there is only on the V. So that means that's 5 times the square root of V cubed. Or you can write that as 5 times the square root of V cubed. Equivalent expressions there. No, because the 5 doesn't have that exponent. The 5 is just in front of it. There are no parentheses around it, so that exponent is only on the variable. Huh? That is 5 times v to the 3x. Well, the 3 is the exponent. 3 is the power. It has to go with the v. Oh, Okay, you, you said before, like, you had to be cautious about that. Yes. Yeah, but which one has the exponent is what I meant, is what you have to be cautious about. And what I meant was, in this case, the V, the variable, is the only thing with the exponent. Not the 5. So the V is to get rid of the negative exponent. Uh, so that means that we will move that entire expression because it's in parentheses, that entire expression is going to move. And then we will write it in radical form. I don't care whether you put the parentheses and the exponent under or you put the parentheses and the exponent on the outside. I'm good either way. Okay. Uh, now, a little distinction here. On this next one, the X is the only, there are no parentheses, so that means the X is the only thing with that exponent. So when you move that, the 11 doesn't move. The 11 does not have a negative exponent, so the 11 does not move. It stays in the numerator. Only the x to the 2 thirds moves to the denominator. And then that is the cube root of x squared. I'm actually going to, from this point on, I'm going to uh, try and be consistent and write it in this form. Because typically, when we get to simplify, Typically, it's easier to evaluate the root first and then apply the exponent as opposed to, like, say, for example, x were 8. It would be easier to take the cube root of 8, which is 2, and square it as opposed to squaring 8, which is 64, and then having to figure out what the cube root of 64 is. Okay? Now, obviously, it's easy with this list. It's easy with the calculator, but if you're having to do it by hand, um, it's a lot easier to get the smaller number from the root and then apply the exponent, okay? Um, so I'm going to try and, and be consistent and write it that way. All right, so right. we have something like 2 times v to the ninth, and that v to the ninth is being raised to the 4 thirds. We have a power raised to a power, so what do we do? Well, when we have a power raised to a power, what do we do? Multiply. Okay, so that's going to be 2 times 
uh, b to the 9 times 4 over 3. Let's have a little fraction lesson over here. 9 times 4 over 3. The 9 over 3 cancels to 3, so that's equal to 12. 9 over 3 reduces to 3, and then you've got 3 times 4. So that's it. Well, we're getting ready. This is just an example where it turns out to be a whole number. We're getting ready to do one where, well, we're getting ready to do a couple, not this next one, but we're going to do some that still have fractions. So right now, that one just turned out to be a whole number. All right, uh, this next one, n squared raised to the 3 halves, power over power, excuse me, power raised to a power we multiply, so 2 times 3 halves, the 2's cancel, we're just left with 3, so this is simply n cubed. So these have all turned out to have whole number exponents. Okay. It's okay. Alright, now, C, we have 125x to the negative 6, and that is raised to the negative 2 thirds. Now, there are a couple of different ways we could go about this problem. But, I'm going to go at it from this perspective. I'm going to start, since there are two things being multiplied by each other, raised to a power, that means you apply that power to both terms. So that means we've got 125 raised to the negative 2 thirds, and we have x to the negative 6 times negative 2 thirds, 6 over 3 is 2, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, x to the 4. Am I saying you can't use a calculator? No, but if you're planning on going forward in math, you need to know how to do fractions without a calculator. Why? Because. Okay, so back to our problem. We've got a negative exponent. We need to take care of that first. The x to the fourth was not negative. The x to the fourth stays. The 125 moves to the bottom. And it becomes positive two thirds. All right. Now, our goal is to simplify, so if we can evaluate this expression, we need to. So, 125 raised to the 2 thirds means that's the cube root of 125 squared. Alright, so yes, the cube root of 125 is 5, and 5 squared is 25. Now, do you see what I mean by it's easier to do the root first? and then apply the exponent. Because if we didn't take the cube root, then we would be squaring 125, which yes, your calculator will do it, and then taking the cube root of that, but it's nowhere near as efficient as just the fact that we know, oh, the cube root of 125 is five, and then square that, it's 25. Um, it's much more efficient to do the root first than the exponent, okay? All right. 